E3 is a very innovative and different funding program uh, which is designed to find small but already excellent research centres in any kind of institution across England um, and enable those institutions to put forward a very exciting proposal to scale and develop that. We've had two rounds of this uh, programme of funding. The first round we funded 13 different centres across England for 76 million and now we found a further 18 for the second wave of this program um, and we'll be investing 156 million in those 18 centres. It's not just for the kinds of staff, academic staff that they might invest in, but our wider team, maybe technicians, maybe professional administrative staff, maybe their facilities and equipment. We will fund across all of those types of resourcing that might be needed to really give them the opportunity to grow and develop. The Centre for Print Research is a distinctive centre of research excellence based at the University of the West of England. It's a unique multidisciplinary group that combines knowledge and skills across traditional and digital techniques to innovate and find creative solutions for the future of print. In 2019, the centre was granted an award of £7.7 .7 million to increase its internationally acclaimed investigation into the artistic, historical and industrial significance of creative print practices, processes and technologies. So what you have here is the, the building that we've moved into. The E3 funding has given us money to invest in people, in kit and in infrastructure. And so we were a very small group and then we have expanded to quite a large group which enabled us to fund associate professors, senior research fellows, research fellows, technicians. So we've evolved from print into 3D printing, uh, ceramics, ceramic extrusion and uh, robotics uh, where we extrude all sorts of different materials. With e funding we have undertaken kind of a, a range of different open doors events and network events which has meant that we've got around a hundred companies in the UK who we've been working with or we've been collaborating with and that's really exciting uh, because it means that we've got this huge kind of network of opportunity. Research England's funding was really really important as a signifier and to show what really good cross-disciplinary or interdisciplinary applied research can do. Before we were scattered across a department, so we had offices and workshops, but they were in separate rooms. The beauty of this space is it's in one big space, and I think that's been the big change, because before you could take them to the different areas, but that's not the same O oh moment. As, as coming into here and seeing a robot on a traditional historic printing press. One of the problems of interdisciplinary work and design work is that unless we have new young people coming through who are really applied researchers, then applied research begins to fall by the wayside. I think the funding has enabled us to expand and try young researchers. So I think that's a crucial aspect of what the E3 funding has allowed, is, is a new cohort of people coming through. Lincoln Agri-Robotics is the world's first global centre of excellence in agricultural robotics, funded by Research England as part of our E3 fund. The centre bridges the strong collaborations that exist between two leading research groups at the University of Lincoln. The Lincoln Institute for Agri-Food Technology and the Lincoln Centre for Autonomous Systems. The role of Lincoln Agri-Robotics is to drive robotic innovation and technical advancement in agriculture, drawing on its network of academic excellence, industry partnerships and funding organisations. Lincoln Agri-Robotics is trying to transform agriculture. Uh, very, very significant for every human in society, but it's an industry with significant challenges and those challenges include availability of labour, there's very significant environmental challenges, greenhouse gas emissions, there's very significant social challenges and that's trying to create high-skilled, high high-value jobs in the industry. So what Lincoln Agrobotics is trying to do is transform that industry 
by looking at applications of robotic systems. That might be robotic systems to harvest crops, that might be robotic systems to monitor crops, robotic systems that might help farmers reduce emissions. Uh, but it's also looking at AI technologies which are embedded in those robots. It's making agriculture digital, uh, it's making uh, agriculture intelligence and making agriculture use data in a very wise way to solve some of their significant issues. So the, the E3 grant's been very significant. It's enabled us to do three things. One, build in people. We've got 30 new members of staff on professorial level, PhD students, professional service staff. Very, very important in terms of enabling that innovation. The second thing is the capital uh, equipment. We've got robots galore, 5G rig, a renovated head office for everybody to work in. And the third thing, which I think is often forgotten, is the sustainability plan. So it's enabled us to think about sustainability. So how do we take the group forward after E3? How do we take those innovations into the industry, into society, and really deliver impact? In terms of supporting the next generation of talent, the E3 grant's quite unique because it comes in as a block grant. So it's given us autonomy, agility, flexibility to actually really identify where our skills gaps are and to build a very multidisciplinary team that works on different projects and that goes right from PhD level through to prof level. So it's a great environment for training, development and mentorship. Diversity is huge for us as a team and the, the funding's really enabled that because we've been able to recruit individuals uh, from around the world. Um, so we have a very diverse team that has different skills and talents. So that's kind of really enabled us to bring in diversity of perspectives. Lincolnshire is, has a huge agricultural base. So for us, it's, it, it's a great place to have Lincoln Agrobotics based. Um, and we're working very closely with the kind of farming communities and growers within our region to really understand and address their challenges and solutions. The Centre for Enzyme Innovation at the University of Portsmouth is tackling one of the most pressing environmental problems facing our planet. Learning from the natural world, the Centre's team are delivering transformative enzyme-enabled solutions for the circular recycling of plastics. As the enzyme breaks down, it releases acid. Um, Following a £5.8 million award from the Research England's E3 Fund in 2019, the centre has created state-of-the-art facilities and built a team of specialist multidisciplinary researchers to deliver world-class research and innovation. Ultimately, we're aiming to develop enzyme-based solutions to breaking down plastic at the end of life. We have teams that uh, study microbiology in the environment. They look for microbes, maybe bacteria or fungi, which might have the ability to break down polymers, plastics. They sequence their genomes, their DNA, and they look within that DNA for enzymes which might be interesting. And then try and work out how we can make them faster and tougher so that they can be deployed in industry to break down plastics. So one of the really great outcomes of the E3 funding was that we were able to expand the centre shortly after with funding from local government through the Solent Local Enterprise Partnership. And that allowed us to add on additional laboratories and innovation space so that we could work closer with industry and try and realise the kind of industrial potential of the work that we were doing. That also provided us with the ability to turn our building blocks, our monomers that we generated using enzymes, back into new plastics or, or other materials that perhaps would have a greater value than the original plastic, and we call this upcycling. It was very exciting when we had the E3 funding because immediately we could start to hire the people we needed to do the research. But what I was less expecting is the global um, perspective that, that came around that in terms of the media. Um, you know, from all around the world, uh, millions of views on, on our social media, um, from, from various um, BBC, CNN, all, all the big media channels were very interested and continue to be. This has been a very successful outfit, we've actually produced a huge amount of very high ranking publications in the area. World class research has been very impressive and that's not due to me, it's not due to Andy, it's due to the, the scientists that we brought here, those young careers 
are really on a trajectory now to go off into the world and use those skills. So we have very big companies coming to us and wanting to be part of this uh, transformation. And this is some of the big fizzy drinks manufacturers, uh, some of the big textile manufacturers. Uh, and this really takes us into a space that we weren't doing before, but are now able to access. The Excellence in England programme has been very much about Research England's objective to continue to build a very diverse, inclusive, agile and active research system across universities in England. So we want to continue with that journey. We want to make sure that we invest in all places in England and in all types of institutions, not just in those that are already very large and very strong and very research intensive. This really helps identifying places where there is excellence, making sure that it can progress more than it would have otherwise. So Research England continues with this, this um, whole agenda and we look forward to the next phase of it.